Okay guys, hello. I've got a video today which will blow your socks off. It's going to be different. This is going to be controversial, but we'll see how it goes. Now, here we have Mars. It's a dead planet. It's denuded of life. If it had life, it, the life is only a parody of what it once was. There's only a few clouds, a bare thin atmosphere. And here's Australia. And I've always thought, as many people have, that Australia is a lot like Mars. It's... And I've always thought Australia is a, des a destroyed country, right? It's... It's been destroyed. I mean, look what's growing here. There's just... There's almost nothing growing here, and it's flat. Flat as a pancake. And uh, despite the mineral wealth, do you see this? It's red, iron oxide. It's, uh, there's hardly anything here. Look at this, flat. Do you know we are the flattest, the flattest continent on Earth? And why are we so flat? Well, if you look at Australia, we're only kind of flat in the red areas the iron oxide producing areas and well I'm sort of putting two and two together here and I'm saying the reason we're flat the reason there are no trees is essentially we're, we are a destroyed continent we have been deforested and this begs the question, when did this happen? I mean, did, did this all happen just from erosion? Just from the fact we're in the middle of a tectonic plate so we don't have any mountain building? I mean, erosion happens everywhere. Uh, they say the Aborigines burn, they burned all the trees, but people were burning trees everywhere to clear land, all over, the, all over the earth. Why do we look like this? And why is it just in the red areas of Australia? Well, I think it's got a lot to do with this mining. But the mining happened in ancient times. And when I say ancient, I don't mean 5,000 years ago. I mean a lot before then. And I'll tell you just how far before then in a moment. But look at what's happening here. This is in the Pilbara in Western Australia. Now we, we are, if you fly over Australia on a plane, it's just flat and red. Now, here in the Pilbara, you have a lot uh, of mining going on. It's ongoing all the time, and it's only in the last two, three generations that this has been accelerating, and we are supplying most of the iron, which is building India, China, United States, other countries. It's all coming from here. Australia is the source. And I'm wondering, is this why Australia was destroyed? Now, if you go to the northern parts of Australia, the hotter parts of Australia, it seems the ancient people left these bits alone because it was more inaccessible. So you still see a lot of this stuff. These are old mountains. And I don't think there are supposed to be any plates here, but you know, you got the old mountains anyway. And this is all hematite. This is red rock. It's full of iron ore, iron oxide. And it's, it's very beautiful as well. Here's a mount, uh, sorry, here's a mine from the air, and it just shows the, the extent of open cut mining. It, it, it literally uh, changes the landscape forever. And imagine if this was happening all over Australia. Here again, an open cut mine, this is in the Pilbara, and they just, they just cut things away. They, they cut, and they cut away mountains too. This is all, this is all strip mined, you see? They, they're changing the landscape forever. They're actually removing mountains. Bear that in mind, removing mountains and Australia, well, where are the mountains gone? Again, the same thing. This is Mount Elephant, a, a volcano in Victoria. Now, the volcanoes popped up about between 100 and 15,000 years ago, and the Aborigines actually remember when this happened. They remember the eruption of Mount Eccles, the creation of Mount Eccles. This is a quarry here, and the quarry was shut down maybe about... 70 years ago. A new quarry uh, popped up uh, about 30 years ago. It shut down as well. And eventually the locals bought this uh, to preserve our geological heritage. 
but it just shows to go how easily a, a mountain can be destroyed. And that's Mount Elephant from another perspective, very beautiful. It's a nice volcano. Here you have Pyramid Hill, and well that's another story, I'll tell you about that in another video, but this is a view of Pyramid Hill from Mount Hope. And this is a very old painting. It was done on the Birkin Wills expedition across Australia. They were looking for an inland sea. But here you have another hill. And guess what's happened to this hill? Uh, they had a gravel quarry here. And that hill, it's gone. It's gone. In one generation, it's gone. It's, uh, it's wherever it was, it, it, it's gone. It's been totally obliterated and the landscape has been flattened. Now, what could have happened? Why was everything destroyed? Well, if we look at Australia as a destroyed continent, why don't we look to the biggest mass extinction event in history to provide some explanation for what has happened? So, I actually started looking up the Permian-Triassic event. And you might not be able to see this on the computer, so I'll just read it, you know. The Great Dying, the End Permian. This is the, the distinction between the Permian and the Triassic 250 million years ago. Now it says here, 96% of marine species were destroyed, 70% of terrestrial vertebrae becoming extinct, and it's the only mass extinction of insects. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but who is killing the insects today? The, the, the bees. It's humans. Humans, who are, it's, a, it's a species that has taken over the earth, totally monopolized it, mining its resources. We're destroying everything, and we are in now in the sixth mass extinction, and it's only just begun. It's only just begun. This was an event that occurred 250 million years ago. This is the event here, the spike. And this suddenly killed everything, and they're, they're always looking for a natural explanation. But look what's causing the extinction today. It's just one species wiping out every other species. Now, I read something here which is rather extraordinary. Totally extraordinary. Uh, and I'm going to share this with you. And uh, this, 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 made me, uh, this made me stop and think. It's called the Coal Gap. No coal deposits are known from the early Triassic, and those in the middle Triassic are thin and low grade. This coal gap has been explained in many ways. It has been suggested that new, more aggressive fungi, insects, and vertebrae evolved and killed vast numbers of trees. Well, maybe. How about logging? What if there was just one species that logged indiscriminately? And this wiped out life on Earth. You wipe out one insect, all the insects follow. Now, I read something here. Uh, now, the coal is missing from the beginning of the Triassic. That's just after the, the mass extinction, which occurs in the, the separation period between the Permian and the Triassic, when everything was destroyed, and it took about 10 million years for the Earth to recover. Now, we had a mass extinction 10,000 years ago. The mammoths were destroyed. It didn't take 10 million years for us to recover. We recovered immediately. We bounced back. The Earth must have been toxic, totally toxic, and totally everything was wiped out for the Earth to take 10 million years to recover. Now, it says here, interestingly, Coal deposits in Australia and Antarctica disappear significantly before the Permian-Triassic boundary. That means deforestation began in Australia and Antarctica before the extinction event occurred. So they were deforesting Australia. Why would you need to deforest Australia uh, in a in a mineral environment, a mineral-rich iron environment, well, for smelting, to extract the iron from the iron ore. That's why Australia, that's, and when, that's when Australia was destroyed. And we were polluted, we were absolutely destroyed. This is why Australia looks like Mars. We're a destroyed continent. We were destroyed by some event in the past. Doesn't have to have been this one, but it could have been this one. I'm not sure if it was this one, but it, it well could have been. Why are coal deposits missing? There are no coal deposits, it's a coal gap. Everything was obliterated. 
all the trees on earth were destroyed. And guess what? That's happening today. That's happening today. Now we go back to the pictures. Uh, the Aborigines retain memory. Uh, or they made a myth about the rainbow serpent. They say the rainbow serpent carved out the land. Now this could be any... they have the most... you know they have the most beautiful myths. They're, they're really nice. Uh, this could be just a, a creation myth, really. Uh, it's something to explain the shape of the landscape, really. And they say there was this huge creature in ancient times that carved out the land. Who knows? Who knows? That's, that's how they explain some of what's happened here. And uh, just to show that there is evidence, and there is evidence everywhere. This, was, this came up a few days ago, it popped up on the internet. Uh, that is a coal face. That is the roof of a coal mine in Russia. Now, we are down many hundreds of meters. That is not a bit of mining equipment in the roof. Trust me, that is not a relief valve. That is artificial, preserved. It's harder than the rest of the mine, which is why it was not destroyed when they started digging into it. Who knows what it is, but that doesn't look like a plant to me. It looks like it's something artificial, really. Uh, or it's a very, very strange tree. Uh, 